Hey everybody, welcome back to Cooking Rules with Jules. That's me, my name is Julia Pon Thomas. I'm here to make your kitchen experience not only incredibly easy, healthy, but delicious too. So I'm back after a six month hiatus. A lot has gone on in the past six months, but I am back in the kitchen and not in mom's retro kitchen. I am back into my hometown right now. Uh, for the time being, we'll see where this year takes me, right? We just never know. But as always, thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. Um, if you haven't found me on Instagram yet, you can find me there at the same handle at Cooking Rolls with Jules, where you can follow along with my daily foodie adventures, not just a recipe of the week, which are back to you once a week uh, on Wednesdays, I think. We're going to see. Anyways, I digress. All right, so. This is what we have today. I'm gonna to make a picadillo, which is a very simple uh, one dish simmer on the stove with beef, basically, All right? I'll give you the ingredients. So we have ground beef. I have here about three tomatoes, uh, medium-sized tomatoes chopped. I have half of a dahlia onion diced finely. I have a fourth a cup of Spanish olives. Those are the ones with the, the green with the pimento in the middle, right? The little Spanish olives. I'm also going to use about a fourth a cup of dried raisins, fourth cup of apple cider vinegar, as always, Himalayan pink sea salt, and then spices because these are my favorite. Let's see. Oop, I didn't mean to pull that out. But your main players are going to be cumin, coriander, cayenne pepper, a dash of cinnamon, and since I neglected to pick up fresh garlic, we have garlic powder for today. So basically this is a Spanish dish, right? Depending on whom is making it, what region, it's gonna have variations, right? So sometimes it will have potatoes, sometimes it will have raisins like mine, sometimes it will have bell peppers. Really just depends on what grandma's recipe you're using. So let's get this party started. I have my pan heated up here over a medium high heat and I'm just gonna throw my ground beef right in here because I already know um, this I get, this is the um, ground chef from Fresh Market, if you have a Fresh Market in your area. Um, and I already know that it is pretty fatty and I don't need to add any extra fat to my pan. So this is gonna be savory by itself. So here the sizzle. What I'm gonna do here is just break it up. And I'm gonna let it start to brown. So this is gonna go by pretty fast. So once this starts to brown, I'm gonna go ahead and add in, well, first and foremost, set this over here. Sea salt, right? And you wanna season it. Keep in mind when you're doing this, the olives are also gonna add a lot of salinity to that. And in fact, I'm going to add the olive juice in there kinda at towards the end. So this is just really to get my ground beef started right now. So here we go. It's already starting to release its fat. So I'm so glad that I don't have to add any extra olive oil. And of course, as we can see, I am back in my Papillon Emerald Lagasse Edition pans and I absolutely love it. Okay, so here we go. We're already starting to get that meat nice and brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my onions. So diced onions, whoop. And by the way, I'm doing this, I have approximately 30 minutes before I have to head out to the gym. So don't worry, this meal is not gonna take a long time at all. In fact, this is relatively very, very easy. I'm gonna just kick my heat up a little bit. I'm gonna get my onions in here, and then I'm gonna go for the spices, which is really going to be the, what's the word I'm looking for? the star of this meal, right? It's really gonna be this combination of savory and sweet that we're gonna play off of. So I happen to like a lot of cumin. In fact, I like it so much, I took off the sprinkle top. I don't have time to bother with that. If I had to guess, I would say I'd probably use anywhere from two to three tablespoons, just depending on the day and what I'm feeling. Um, 
Oops. Also be careful not to like, you know, dump that out. Oh, it's got a little sting in there. Okay. Cumin in the pan. I also spilled on my nice clean stove because why not? It's my first video back. Why not make a mess? Okay, so I'm gonna stir that in there. Next thing I'm going to add is going to be my coriander. So this one is like a lemon lime spice. Again, I really love this one. It tends to get a little bit caked up. So I'm going to grab, there's always, I always forget something. Just gonna grab a little fork here to break this up. And again, um, for the coriander, I wouldn't go as much, maybe one or two tablespoons worth, right? Get that nice and rolling. See, I even took the top off of that, okay. Cinnamon, this is gonna be our sweet play, right? Again, I'm gonna say about maybe a half a teaspoon there. I really don't need a lot of cinnamon. And then the heat from the cayenne pepper. Mm, I'm feeling kind of spicy today, so I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna say, I don't know, probably again, a half a teaspoon. Again, as you're cooking, you know, you're the chef. Adjust these as needed because then it becomes your recipe, right? I'm just showing you how to do quick and easy tips and tricks on like Paleo Whole 30 style meals. It is up to you to create your own legacy recipes in your home. All right, so this is browning up really nicely. As you can tell, we're only like, what, six minutes in and we're rocking and rolling here. And then of course, this is when I would add fresh chopped garlic if I had it, but because I was zoned out at the grocery store yesterday, I'm going to just add in a decent amount of garlic powder. Again, I'm gonna probably guesstimate that to be about one teaspoon or two teaspoons of garlic powder. Okay, so my beef is getting nice and brown and it's rendering this fat nicely. If you happen to have a leaner meat, that's okay. Um, just make sure that you coat the bottom of your pan with olive oil beforehand. All right, now for magic. This is where the magic begins. I'm going to add in my whole tomatoes. Most recipes call for canned tomato recipes. I hate canned tomatoes. They make me want to cry. And tomato paste always gives me really terrible acid indigestion. I don't know why, but it's just a thing. So I'm going to get my fresh tomatoes in here and reduce the heat and kind of let these guys simmer down. Again, I'm gonna add in now my olives. We're gonna add some salinity. With the rest of my olive brine here. Plus it's gonna give me a little bit more cooking liquid. All right, look at that, cooking up nicely. So now you can hear the simmer. I'm just gonna give it a nice, easy stir. And then I'm going to go down underneath here, grab my lid, come back in about 10 minutes when these have cooked down and show you what I've got. Okay, friends, I'm back and obviously we are steaming away over here. Uh, I covered my pan and actually it was less than 15 minutes. It was probably maybe only seven if I'm going to be completely honest. But my tomatoes have completely um, already cooked down, right? So they're no longer in whole form. And I'm also starting to get this really delicious like water-based sauce that's gonna go along with it. Now this dish is traditionally served over rice. So if that fits into your nutrition, then go for it. I am just going to eat this probably honestly over a sweet potato tonight. Um, or you could do cauliflower rice or whatever you wanted to serve it over. Or eat it like a stew, you could do that as well. I've done that in the past. So now that all of my tomatoes have cooked down, now this is really where the magic happens. I wish I could think and talk today. All right, apple cider vinegar, only about a fourth of a cup. You need a little bit of a lot acid hit, right? Probably gonna be right about where I'm at. And then raisins, I said a fourth a cup. You can go anywhere from a fourth to uh, a half. I'm probably gonna honestly opt for the half just because this is a lot of beef, so that's probably right about right. 
And now I'm gonna give it a nice little stir. And I'm gonna let it just do its thing with time and simmer and cook. Which will probably need, honestly, like another 15 minutes for it to really start tasting delicious. Now, as with anything that's done in a pot that is like a simmer style uh, meal, the longer you let it go, the better it's gonna taste because all those flavors come together. And uh, when I took a taste test, I did add in more cumin, by the way, and I was really wishing I had fresh garlic because that would have totally changed the dynamic of this dish. But as always, that's it. See, there we did it in what, 10 minutes or less? Another quick and easy delicious. This is both paleo and Whole30 approved meal. And I'm glad to be back. And also I have a cookbook, which I will drop a link in the bottom description of this video that is coming out uh, once it's up and published. So look for that. It is my first edition. Look for a second coming later in 2022. All right. Hope you're staying safe, being well, and eating really delicious things.